Hello and welcome back to Bloodborne, where we've just gotten our hands on a fun new weapon. And where we have got some loose ends to tie up in Yarnum. So let's head back to central Yarnum. This will take us about as close as we can get to where we actually want to be. I guess the uh, the bridge might be slightly closer, but then we'd have to fight our way through some large-ish enemies to get to where we want to be. So that wouldn't be too terribly useful after all. Okay, so which way do we want to go? Hmm. I think going left would probably get us there faster, but going this way lets us hit everything we want to hit on the way. So we're going this way. And then we'll just drop down here, save a little time. Not much, but a little. Hello. Okay. That guy just stepped into the fire and killed himself. So it seems the sword mode of this weapon is a little slower than the saw cleaver. But that's fine. It still works. I'm just gonna have to get used to it is all. I think it might also be a little slower than the uh, Ludwig's Holy Blade Sword, but I could be wrong on that front. It's been a while. Okay, so we are going to deal with this fella, mainly so that we can go over and chat with the little girl. Ow. No pushing. That's what I wanted. Goodbye, sir. Thanks for the blood vials. So, yes. Little girl. Hello, Mr. Hunter. Hi. You're caught by my mom. Nope. Sorry. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, neither of these options is good, but... Yes, okay. Don't you, Mr. Hunter? I love you almost as much as Mom and Dad. And Granddad. All right. Stay Don't safe. You. I love you. Please, please stay safe. I know you won't, but... Still... Alright, now let's deal with these pups again. Woof woof. Oh, something just died of its own volition. There. Have we gone up here before? Yes, yes we have. Hello, doggies. And we can probably leave that dog there. Now to tell this lady of Erden Chapel. So what is it now? A much better way to be left. You found me a nice, safe place. I have. Well, what now? An outsider worth a lick of salt. Well, don't just stand there. Don't you have work to do? Yeah. Go slit some throats. Get this mess done with. You seem to be mistaken as to what my job entails. Trust me, I've yet to slit a single throat. Okay. 
So, here we can roll through these to access this higher ledge. What's up here? I don't quite... Well, now I recall. Ooh, yes, I recall indeed. There's a friend up here. A fellow hunter. Oh. A hunter, are you? And an outsider. What a mess you've been caught up in. And tonight of all nights. Here. To welcome the new hunter. Prepare yourself for the worst. There are no humans left. They're all flesh-hungry beasts now. Oh. Still lingering about. What's wrong? A hunter unnerved by a few beasts. Nope. <laughs> no matter. Without fear in our hearts, we're little different from the beasts themselves. Hooray for gestures. What are you still doing? Enough trembling in your boots. A hunter must hunt. All right. And I believe there's an item somewhere around here, though I could be wrong. And not seeing one. Oh, that's right. You can get something by killing her, but I don't want to do that. I would much rather follow her story to its conclusion. We just knocked that down because that way there will be a weapon waiting for us down below. It's an alternate version of the saw cleaver. Or maybe it's from this one. One of those two things has it. And said alternate version of the saw cleaver is the saw spear. Which, I mean, I'm not really going to use it, but it exists. So I think that's it for what we can do up here. So the question then is, what's the safest way down? Because I'm beginning to think there isn't really one. Yeah, I guess just dropping here. Yeah, it didn't hurt too bad. So there'll be one of those creatures here. Hello. Already feeling the reduced da- or, uh, yeah, the lack of increased damage against beasts. But, in hammer form, this thing does damage. Which I appreciate, I like to do damage. Alright, there's one over there. Who we might be able to sneak up on. And he will have just a lovely day if we manage it. Yep. Ew. Nice try there, guy. This is a lot of blood. Not sure what the kind of brown twinge is, but it's nasty. Good job trying to shoot through a wall at me. You're a genius. Give me those bullets. Okay. That's it for this side. Now we've got the other side to look around. Hello. Thankfully, as long as I keep attacking, we can keep him flinched. So, I do believe that's everything on this level. Now, we can drop lower, but before I do that, 
We're going to go clear out the upper level outside. Just so that I've got less to worry about when I'm exploring the rest of this place. And can't go across this because that stuff's unbreakable. So there are going to be two gunmen around here. Yep. And they're both together. What luck. Okay. Took a little damage, but that's fine. Hello. There we go. It's going to take a little while for me to get used to the blunderbuss. I keep on firing a bit too early. Primarily because I know the blunderbuss fires a little slower than the pistol did. And uh, that knowledge has me firing pretty significantly earlier than I would with my pistol. But eventually I'll get it down. And then we won't have anything to worry about. And off go those crows. And this one's stuck in some barrels. Oh, it got shunted out. I'm actually kind of surprised. Wow, did I seriously just... Oops. Did I seriously do more damage with just a regular attack than with my jumping attack? Because if so, that's kind of sad. This requires testing. Okay, so one of them took 104, but the other only took 55. So I think it took 104 because it was in the middle of an attack animation. That's my guess. And if that is truly why, then it is indeed the case that we do more damage with a regular attack than a jumping attack, which is kind of sad. Now, I would drop to the item down there right now, but we're going to have to make several drops from this upper level down to lower levels. So we'll certainly have more chances. So there's rats over there. And there's probably rats over here as well. Not seeing them, actually. But let's drop to the rattier side. There's our sauce beer. Let's hammer the rats. Okay. This thing seems to have wildly variable damage depending on just where the hammer strikes in relation to its target. Which is odd. I, I hope I can figure out just what I can do to maximize damage in the very near future. Yeah, since there's an item on the other side, we're going to want to go over there. But there's no way to get over there from down here. So instead, we'll just play with these rats. And grab this item. Ah. Let's go ahead and use that. We want to be more knowledgeable, have more insight. I forget whether it's 10 or 20 insight where the bosses start gaining new moves, but... Hello. Sometimes the rats from up on the sides decide to drop down here into the middle. Can cause problems sometimes, but usually it's just fine. Insight waits ahead. Well, that's probably for if you're coming from this way, I guess. All right, back up we go. This time we'll drop on the other side. So that'd be over here. Hello, rat. So, one of those hits was 80 damage and the other was 33. So I guess maybe this hammer has a small amount of 
or a small radius splash effect. That might be it. What are rats doing with throwing knives? Well, if it does have a small splash effect, that at least makes it more useful for crowds. We'll have to experiment. Of course, it would be nicer if the splash effect was, you know, more than half instead of less than half. But that might be a bit too OP. And thus we get a bloodstone shard. And now we're basically done here. So, next stop is Cathedral Ward, which we can actually get to more quickly going through there. How did someone put a message there? Huh. Then again, sometimes stuff like that shows up in awkward places. Like, once I was in a chalice dungeon while playing offline, and I saw one of these bloodstains against a ceiling. It was very strange. Especially because A, it was against the ceiling, which, you know, you can't ordinarily get up there. And B, I was playing offline. So there shouldn't have been one anywhere much less against a ceiling. Yeah, let's just work our way quickly back to a lantern. What lantern could we get to most easily? I suppose we could rush back this way. In fact, we've got business in Yosefska, Yosefka's clinic. Need to not fumble my words. Just gonna run past all these gentlemen. Sure, they're not fans of me, but there's not much they can do about me. So, here we go. To the clinic. Thankfully, the lycanthrope here never respawns again. And we want to go up here and talk to someone. Oh, well, hello. Splendid. Let me ask you a small kindness. You're soon off to hunt, I presume? Already off to hunt. Then, if you find any survivors, tell them to seek Yosefka's clinic. Upon my Hippocratic oath, if they are yet human, I will look after them. Perhaps even cure them. This sickness, these beasts, they are not to be feared. This time the night is long. I may be trapped here, but I should do something to help. I'll even offer a reward for your cooperation. Tempted? Tempted. Well... Off you go, then. If you find anyone, you can assure them there's no place safer. This is untrue. Please, do me this service. In fact, a lot of the things she's saying are untrue, including the fact that she calls herself Yosefka. Because had we uh, gone back and tried to talk to her after the first time we died... Then we would have gotten to meet the real Yosefka, saying that, you know, she's tending to the sick in there. And she simply can't allow anyone from outside to gain entry. Because if she does, then it would, I guess, be harmful to her patients. And thus, we know that tis not the real Yosefka in there. All right, so one upgrade will unlock that first blood 
gem slot. And also will increase my damage by a decent amount. Another 10 on top of 105. Plus better scaling, I think. And sure, we can afford another one. There we go. Need a bunch more bloodstone shards for plus three. And blood gems. Yeah, I'll take 2.7% increased physical attack. And ever so slightly boosted rally potential. I mean, it's better than not having anything in the slot. And now let's talk to the doll. Sorry to wake you. Welcome home, good hunter. I must have drifted off. What is it you desire? I desire to level up. Very well. Let me stay. Oh, I can't. Sorry. Farewell, good. May you find. Well, let's get back to the Cathedral Ward now that we've spoken with the false Yosefka. There are precisely two characters I would ever tell to go to Yosefka's clinic. And one of them I won't even tell to. I'll just end up killing him where he stands. But the other one, you tell to go to Yosefka's clinic. And then he decides, no, Erden Chapel's the better place to go. Or you could tell him to go to Erden, but then he decides, no, Yosefka's clinic is better. But if you want to keep people alive, Erden Chapel is the place to send them. Speaking of which... There's this lady. Oh, no. I haven't forgot. Do you think I owe you something? Maybe. <laughs> well, that's a fine lark, I'd say. This old mess at Yarnum's in, it's all your fault. Gepidity outsiders. Our blood's ruined. Tainted by your ilk. Don't you come near me. I know the type. Okay. And one of my tricks is waiting until she starts losing it and starts liking me. So. Hey, guy. Nice try. So these guys like to give bullets. But not always. Wow, you just straight up missed. So, we don't yet have enough insight. But let's grab that. Then get out of the way. At first, when that showed up, I thought, whoa, is that like a portal to some other place? And I intentionally got caught by it. I died. And then I tried to uh, shoot at it. Didn't go so well. And actually, I want to wear this top hat. I wore it pretty much the whole time last time I was playing this game. And actually, I wore this version of the Hunter Garb. Not for any reason other than I personally think it looks better. So now, I am wearing the same clothing I was wearing for most of my last run. But since your clothing doesn't matter so much in this game... I feel just fine in so doing. So, I forget what's down this way. But I suppose I'll figure it out. Oh, this takes me down to... Yeah, okay. I don't want to go down there just yet. So I won't. Instead... I'll be going up here. Eh. There's not too much to fear about the giant beast. Sure, it's big. And big can be scary, but... 
As long as you stick near their feet, you can dodge their stuff pretty easily. And it's not like they attack quickly, so plenty easy to get out of the way. Now we could pull this to close this gate and that would prevent the giant beast from ever climbing the stairs. But then we'd also be trapped on this side, which doesn't help. They say beware of charging forth because that guy shows up and fighting two of these at once can be a bit difficult. Hey buddy, you wanna swing your statue at me? There's what I wanted. Ooh, you're a resilient one. And since we know we'll get the blood vials back... Well... Yeah, this crow... had me worried. Ow. Oh, also doing a visceral attack while you've still got some rally potential completely refills the refillable health, which is nice. Alright. Blood vials. Bird vials. Alrighty. So there's an item to be got here, right? Oh, wrong. Could have sworn there was an item somewhere around here, but I guess I'm misremembering. I do know that we're soon going to encounter a scurrying beast. But that, I believe, lies past this fella in front of us. So we actually don't want to get too close to him. We want to get just close enough that we can aggro him. Because otherwise, the scurrying beast will notice us and run off. And I'd rather be able to kill the scurrying beast and get some loot out of it. Whoa, thank goodness for iframes. Okay, we clearly need to be in hammer mode if we want to do respectable damage to him. And we also need to actually score hits rather than near misses. Oh, just had the potential for a visceral, but lost it. So, scurrying beast... Maybe I'm misremembering where the beast spawns. Oh no, it's right here. Wow. Why wasn't it running? That was odd. That was very odd. But hey, we've got the bloodstone shards to upgrade this thing again. And then we'll be done with bloodstone shards on it. And then we can use them on our blunderbuss, I suppose. And now, time for rolling. Yes, remember rolling, remember joy. Wondrous rolling. Sure, it's violating the remains of those stored within these urns, but... Still. And then we go this way to this chest. Yeah, Woeful Secret is right. See, this door here, it's closed. And you can actually find the other side of this door. It's where you fought the cleric beast. And it's closed from that side, or I believe it says does not open from this side. Must have been originally intended to be a shortcut, but then I guess they decided to not have it be ever accessible. So, yeah. It's not. That door never opens. Ever.
So let's head on up these stairs. And then we can go up these stairs. And since we've got our little key thing, this gate will open for us. Now, if we had more insight, we'd be able to see that there were some messengers here that opened this. But we don't. So, given the time, what I'm going to do now... Oh, I could just close the gate with this one, huh? Yeah, since we've got no reason to go that way anymore, might as well. Make things a little simpler. Yeah, given the time, I do believe I'm going to just make my way back in here where it's safe and end the episode. And this is also the end of this session, so the enemies may or may not respawn. But we'll just have to see, won't we? Yeah, that's it for this episode. Join us next time when I do believe we'll probably end up fighting another boss. Though I could be wrong on that front. We'll have to see. See you then, friends.